Thank you. We'll be there in a second, people. No one's joined us on now. Uh, here we go, YouTube. And then don't forget if you can put that into our Facebook page. Make sure it's not your own page. Because you did that last time. Right, we're in. We're in. We're in. Yeah, we're going live. Ooh -wee. Boom, boom, boom. So buzzing about this. I'm going to quickly listen to this for about 10 seconds before. All right. Uh... Just wait for the feed to come through. Here we go. So what pe what's happening, people, is we're going live on YouTube. We're going live on Instagram. And we're going to post the link into Facebook so people can obviously watch on one of those as well. Well, it'll actually be the link to the YouTube. Uh, but the reason we're going live is so that hopefully as people come past and join, they can drop in their comments. They can drop in questions. And we can hopefully ask, answer those questions or help or just have a chat. Um, and it will all be on the podcast at a later date for you to be able to um, for you to be able to use so or watch back and you know tell people about it so um, if you don't know about this podcast yet then where have you been uh, mm. it's the simply create scrapbook which means this is exactly that we talk about ideas we talk about kind of uh, various bits and pieces but the outline rough structure is um, the three core kind of um, things that simply create are built is built around which is inspire create and innovate so trying to get some inspiration going with the crew um trying to get some creativity going with everyone and then obviously once we've got the creativity going we can um start to innovate around whatever topic that is um so we currently uh so this week's topic is one thing i think me and sam are going to be able to talk about loads which is stories um so anyway before that, Sam, yes, sir. tell people about you. How are you doing? What are you up to? What, what's what's going? What's new? You know, I've been good. To people, uh, Jesus, what's new? Um, so recently, we did uh, Ray and I have done a bit of shooting over in London of just photos and videos of um, what we're trying to do is like build an asset library, or sorry, like a stock library. So Simply Create is going to have its own uh, fresh content now, and we also did some like photo shoots of each other now so there's a there's amazing photos of me posing with like a flat cap and all the rest of it can't wait to get through all of that those um, poses were, were genius we we're the least uh, modelly people but we were in the middle of like a nice nice part of london posing mm. against walls and all sorts it was uh, quite fun oh mate we look beautiful um and yeah uh, so what else is going on uh, just more and more graphic design um i'm trying to sneak my way into certain graphic design groups and just sort of sneak in and then uh, get all these drops of experience sort of come down and see if I can cr just grab some of those and take that in and absorb it and then start using it myself. Um, oh, and i tell you what um, was a bit of big news for me, um, which Ray knows about a couple of days ago. Um, I've just come into contact for real and get some practice with um, Adobe Capture. And oh, yeah. And Ray, I was showing Talk Ray. Talk to the town. This we, we, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, there's probably designers who's going to watch this and be like, oh, dude, we've known this for like years and years. But I've just come into contact with it. Um, and I think if if it's handled properly, I think you could overhaul on your um, – so, the, so the, for your content, for your social media – oh, sorry. In my case, for making content for the so, Simply Create social media, I think it's going to – um, turbocharge making the filler content so when we've got um, posts going out once a week just updating everyone with like yeah sort of the basic stuff I think it's gonna be really easy to build um, quick and easy vectors to use in multiple posts at once which is going to help for recycling content now with Adobe Capture I think personally my I, I think Adobe Capture has got something like six or seven main features um, oh, we got some folks joining our Instagram. That then, um, yeah. So Adobe Capture, I love it for its um, shapes function, where essentially you can take a photo of something, and then it's just lit and then it's um, if you take a photo of it, and if you tweak the settings right, it will build a vector straight out of it for you, um, and then also you could do post process processing after after taking that photo. So I put my Canon camera on the on the coffee table when me and Ray were having a meeting. Tweaked the settings, took the photo on my S9. Adobe Capture turned that into a vector on the spot. 
and then I could do some post effects to it to make it look even better. And now I've just uploaded it to my Adobe Cloud. So now, now the next time Ray's just like, yeah, we need a quick vector to um, to represent photography or digital camera. I've just got it. So now I think that's completely. Tra- this is going back to the point about um, uh, when you are going out and about and trying to find ideas or just get that creative spark again. Um, it's almost like Pokemon Go. You're trying to capture all of these ideas. So you'll see something you like the look of it, and you can just capture it. If it's a pattern on a wall, if it's a like, if it's a if it's a if it's like a leaf that's fallen on the floor, you're like that looks cool. You can just take a photo of that, and that can be turned into a vector or whatever. I think like that I said, it was yeah, it, it, it's 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 another thing about uh, which is definitely in the kind of inspire bit, but also the create. I suppose in both of them is that playing around with things that you don't necessarily know mm. everything about uh, and exploring to see if it could help you, if it can help you, how you think it could help you. You might not even use it in the way that everybody else is using it. So you might go, oh, other designers might have known about it ages ago, but the way you might use it. Or the way you might use it in comparison to other people that have stumbled on it might be different. So Certainly. just yeah, explore, yeah. just explore the things you come across to see if you, it can help you. Because you might come across a gem which is, looks like what you may have come across there. Um, obviously, you need to give it a little bit more time, a little bit mm. more um, input, but uh, and play, uh, time to play around with it. But yeah, you could be there in. It could speed up your process and help you with your innovation as well. Because if it can well, save time and yeah, not only that, talking about the um, stock library that we want to build, um, instead of me trying to draw on Illustrator vectors from scratch, we could just get a whole bunch of just mundane objects and stick it on a relatively well-lit um, turntable or something. But basically set up a photo shoot of just random objects like pens, pencils, cameras, yeah, yeah. videotape, uh, whatever. And we could just video generate... Videotape. Video... Explain. Yeah, ex- Explain. VH- VHS tapes. Now, now explain CD. why that even came to mind. V- when was the last time you put a VHS on? Jesus, I think it was about... For the younger members of the audience, a VHS <laughs> was a, a, was a huge brick like mm. that you put into a player. But yeah, yeah. It was before uh, DVDs, G- basically, you put it that way. G-, G. Williams just joined us. But yeah, you can, like a pair of scissors, you could just stick it on a, on a table and take a photo of it and you can create the vector straight away. So you could build so many assets in 24 hours. If you, you could literally, we could just say we're going to have Adobe Capture Day and just so many, fo- so many vectors and then we've just got a pool of, uh, and you can hashtag those um, images. So if you're an illustrator or After Effects, you say, I want a vector of this. It just picks out all of the ones that we would have done from ages ago. And you just slowly start building a massive library of um, really also, cool I assets. I don't know if anyone's there. I think Kate, Katie, you might be there. Just uh, check in on sound on Instagram. Everything's okay and you can hear us and all that kind of stuff. Because uh, uh, between us, I had problem with sound and <laughs> Sam had problem with video. So between us, we basically we, we didn't have a clue what was going on. But uh, yeah, so hopefully that's all all right. If anybody's listening or whatever, if you can let us know uh, uh, well, as you come about, if you can hear us or see us or whatever. Um, right, so we're going to jump into the theme of today. Um, and I'm quite excited about this theme. It is, a theme. it is a theme that I think we could talk about for a very long time. So we might have to come back to it and do a different parts uh, now and then. But And we're definitely not going to get into all the detail we want. But is the theme is stories. So the power of stories in uh, when you're creating, um, well, anything really, but when you're getting creative, how you get your stories across, um, when you're creating social media, how you get in your brand story, your personal brand story, your own personal journey story across, um, when you're um, doing pictures, video, all this kind of stuff. So, well, yeah, stories is definitely the theme, and, and we'd love anybody who's listening and come across uh, as input. Um, so, what we're going to start with is stories that we either know of, uh, this can be true stories or not, um, that have inspired us in some way or, or we believe is an inspiring story for some, for some reason. Um, and then we're going to go from there and we're going to try and break that down into some elements for everybody um, when they get creative with their stories. So um, let's, let's, let's go about this a little random way, Sam. Um, tell us some of the stories that you've read that you've liked the, um, on uh, video, Netflix, video is the key, uh, cassette, you know, whatever you've liked uh, ah, your, your yeah, stories yeah. on. What, tell, tell people kind of the, kind of the kind of stories you like. Maybe you don't want to say specifics. 
Um, so the first thing that comes to mind, uh, I'm going to approach this this first bit as uh, everyday stories, um, nice. which I think would t- which could explode into like a whole yeah, evening definitely. conversation. Um, I am very very keen on the. Sorry, this is going to sound weird. I was about to sound very, very keen on global warming. Um, <laughs> no, but I follow I follow a lot of um, groups and forums which are all to do with um, global warming and let's let's say what we're doing to combat it. Um, now, you know, I, basically I, what that means is I get loads of Facebook um, articles and videos, stories essentially in my newsfeed, which is all about um, what the next big development is. But then also I listen to loads of TED Talks, which are all about what's being worked on at the time. So there's all kinds of stories about how um, we're currently breeding um, special trees, which can do so much more carbon um, intake and processing. And then it spits out just, you know, everyday oxygen. Um, And if you could, and it only takes up a certain amount of land compared to if you built some sort of carbon processing power station, and that would, you know, in terms of how much price cost and its effectiveness. Um, so I get all kinds of different stories like that, but it's really inspiring to know that there's loads and loads of different pockets of people from all across the world that are doing like some, like some of the most incredible projects at the moment. There's like, like I said, these power stations, um, I'll make, I'll put a link into the, the, once I find it again, I'll put a link, but there's one that literally sucks in carbon and process it and, and spits it out and into a carbon liquid form and you can literally pour it into your car as petrol and it just works yeah, it's not it's it's not even it's not even uh we sprinkle in a bit of chili powder nothing like that it's just, <laughs> so like carbon carbon in the air ca- uh, carbon into liquid you can stick it in your car and it goes and i thought that was incredible. i was uh i read one not so long ago about which was good actually I, I didn't read it i saw a video on it um which was the uh there's a guy in and i don't know the country i'm roughly i think it was like indonesia of some kind uh i think somewhere and it was seaweed what they were doing with seaweed and it basically grew a seaweed farm and was converting oh, yeah. the seaweed into like uh like pa- it was like pla- plastic what, packaging. Yeah, what plastic yeah, yeah. was, but it's not because it was even to the point. Not only was it reducing plastic, it was actually edible. <laughs> so yeah, it was exactly, actually yeah. helping with you know uh, you know sustenance. Uh, so you could basically eat something, and it had a pod of water in it and things like that. Like ama- yeah. it was amazing. Um, so so I get every I get every little snippets of inspiration every day with all these everyday stories that keep coming up on newsfeed. Um, yeah, and this is through Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, really inspiring stories. I don't know. Um, I think one for me is, uh, I'm a big sports fan for the most part. Oh, yeah. Um, so I do like a, uh, underdog story. Mm. I think everybody does, but I mean, specifically with sport, I do love a, like, so-and-so hasn't got a chance in beating so-and-so and then they turn it around, you know. One of the greatest things, I don't, you know, don't know how much you're, obviously you'll know about it, but I don't know if you even for support a football team. Do you, Sam? Don't even uh, know not, you. not particularly. No, no. No. Um, but um, Leicester, obviously, a few seasons back, winning the Premier League and coming out of nowhere to do it. That was just, for me, that was just like what, what sport is about, is about that actually... Sometimes, it's, although it tends to be a lot about money at the moment, for the most part, sometimes it's just not about the money. Yeah. Um, and, that, and, that, and that's cool. And again, it's, you know, the runner that was injured or the, the team that's come from nowhere to be playing against a really big team in whatever competition. And then, you know, uh, willing. I don't know whether it's the, it, maybe the, you can help, because depending on if it's the fact that the underdog won or it's the fact that the person who was a given lost <laughs> i don't know what it is but i suppose it's much of a muchness really but i quite find that i quite find them very um like it that they cause me to want to do things you know i want to go back and play some sport or i want to get involved or i want to sport support them or whatever mm, or to research and do some to find out how they got there and what their journey was yeah nice um who's your most inspiring storyteller at the moment oh that is very difficult storyteller. Um, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you. Oh, I don't know if I want to give. What you are we going? Are we going books here? Or are we going video? Are we going any kind of storyteller? Let, well, actually, let's say any kind of storyteller because I've got one, but he's a YouTuber, and, I've and, got... it's, and it and it was the first one that I came across, and this was back in 2012 or something like that. 
Um, and that's what the so full story, role is for me, really. Storyteller, I would say, um, well, it's very, very quirky. But books that I've kind of liked a lot of, but haven't read one for a while, was Chuck Palahniuk, which is the guy that wrote Fight Club. Oh, touch. But he, I've, re- I've read a few, few of his books, like four or five different books, and they are awesome storytelling. They're really random and really whatever. Quite modern, I would say, in, in his approach to storytelling. So uh, you might not be, that would be an eclectic taste, I'm sure. Um, okay. I also, I have to say, and this is, again, jumping completely, this is how much I love the Harry Potter. I love the books, and I've read them loads of times. I, 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 the film's not as much, but the books were just, for me, at the time, were incredible. Mm. And then a YouTuber whose storytelling I love, I would probably... Ah, oh, that's... It's quite difficult. I would probably say it's across between uh, cinematically Tyler Babin and... Okay. And then a little bit more, like... Um, Funny and relaxed, but been doing it a lot bit uh, a lot longer. Peter McKinnon. Okay, cool. Uh, what about yours? Uh, so the first two, the okay. So I've got two straight off the bat. Um, the first one who I ever came across was YouTube. Is a YouTuber called Eric Thomas. Okay. Um, and he did, and he made. Um, he was he. So he's he's done like uh, the first time I saw him, he did like a two parter of fifteen minutes, and he told this story about. Um, he told this story about a guru trying to teach a dude and the punchline was when you, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. That like, again, 15 minutes and he does like a whole thing that just like, right, touched me right there. And I was Mm -hmm. just like, right, that's, that's it. I'm good. Whatever it is I want to do, I'm going to go all out as opposed to just meh, like this is fun. Um, and what other kinds of, what other kind of stories? So like, uh f- even films what are like if i the classic question if i ask you your top three films not only will they be your top three but obviously i would assume there is a reason in terms of storytelling there oh, it's really really tough i want to say for story i want to say um it's so good that i've not forgotten the name uh the uh is it the prestige Oh, no, not the press, not the prestige. It's the other one, uh, the illusionist. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Very who, good. Who, yeah, very good. Who was? I can't remember the actor's name. I think it's the dude who Ed, was the main Ed invite. Ed Norton, isn't it? Is it? I Ed think Norton? it is. Yeah, I absolutely love that story. Um, also, because of the time period as well. Um, but then also just like how it all turns out. It's like one of those clever Sherlock Holmes kind of storytelling things, where like you like there's so much day to day to day to 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 take in, but. Essentially, at the end, it all comes back together and, and sorts itself out, or at least Sherlock Holmes sorts itself out. But with The Illusionist, it actually turns... The, it, it's a really, really good and a really nice twist at the end. Um, it's, it, it's almost slightly... What's the word? Um, it's not in unethical, but it, it basically it's, the, it, it's based on a lie, the, the, the twist at the end, but it still works Don't out. Don't give away. You know I mean. We didn't tell no, 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 no. No, no, no. It's all good. We it's didn't good. tell anyone. That's that's spoiler. that's not. A, it's not a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. But that's that. That was the really nice bit of the storytelling ending to me. So it twisted. So you know it's going to be all right, pretty much. But it, it, it's it's twisted at the end. So it's it's actually even better. Um, so that's a really nice bit of storytelling that I enjoyed. I am a big um, gladiator fan. Oh yeah. So I ah um, uh, spoilers. No, I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> definitely, definitely not gonna spoil. No, I've, I've seen, I've seen it, but like, um, came out two thousand nine. If you hadn't seen it, I'd be really surprised. Mm, um, certainly, I feel like that is a, a you film. Um, but basically, so with this story, with Gladiator, I love it for all the reasons I kind of mentioned. One, I find it's quite underdog. It, it well, it turns into an underdog story slightly. Um, two, it. Um, it, it, the medieval, the medieval or the era in which it, what it sets up it, is great, and and actually the character arcs are, are, are brilliant as well in terms of um, obviously Maximus going on his journey, but also the the, the empire going on theirs, etc. So uh, yeah, so I'm a massive. It's pro- it, I always say I don't have a number one film, but I have a number two, and my number two is Gladiator. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, just because I can't put anything in that top spot, it's too it's 
because there's so many different genres of, of storytelling, right? Of, of film, anyway. Um, okay, so we've I think we've given a little bit of an insight into the stories we like and what uh, what inspires us of, of, of those stories. And we've talked about social media, so we've talked about you reading your articles on Twitter. We've talked a, bit, a little bit about books, um, a bit about film, which is nice. Um, and obviously, if anybody who's listening has got any questions about books, films, uh, YouTube, social media, whatever that might be in terms of storytelling, ping it over to us. The next thing to move on to, I think, you know, is breaking down the elements of what we think makes a good story. So not necessarily what us making a story yet, not saying we won't come to that, but what do we think are like the key attributes to, well, I say think, I believe I know some of them, I'm, I'm not going to lie, um, but what do we as a, a, think that a good story consists of? I, I'm going to have to let you lead on this one because I, I know you are way better at this because you're, you're, the first video I saw of you doing stories was incredible and, and especially when it's condensed down into three or four minutes, was it? Well, thank you. But it's be- be- beautifully it. done. It's beautifully um, done. Yeah, that's on YouTube. I think it's the one you're talking about, which is where I've basically broken down what are the, the points of a, a good story, um, which is really interesting because actually knowing them and applying them is actually really difficult. Um, mm. So I feel like I know them, but actually find sometimes it difficult when I'm shooting my own stories to 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 lead with those those key key elements. Um, so okay, so the first thing is, and we can talk about this because you're going to definitely be able to jump in straight away, is um, creating a relatable character. Mm-hmm. If there's a character that's too far fetched or too far away, I feel like you lose the audience that they don't believe that they can follow. Now. What I want to point out with this is, is I'm not just talking about films. If you think about TV series, or even as much as I hate to say it, um, what's it called? Uh, reality TV. One of the reasons that people connect with certain people and certain individuals so much is because they can um, uh, relate to them in some way. They can mm-hmm. relate to them in terms of uh, their personality, or their, their again their story or their history, something they've been through or done, or the goal that they've set themselves. Um, so I think that it, I want to say character loosely, but I mean, personality is someone you need to be able to connect with, um, to be able to, uh, go on that journey with them. I always say when it comes to a character, if you love the person that you are, um, Oh, Sam's left. Bye Sam. Uh Oh, oh um, dang it. No, I was, uh, I was trying to uh, grab the um, YouTube right. link that you made for the it's storytelling right. one. Re, just re-add yourself. So if you... I don't even know what I was saying. What was I saying? Um, it's yeah. all about relatability to uh, stories. Yeah, yeah. So if you... If you if the character... I would say that if the character makes you feel something, if you are ecstatic for them or if you hate them, you know those characters, and this isn't a Game of Thrones spoiler, but it is a character in it. Anybody who's seen it, Joffrey... If you hate the character that much, the, one, the performance is great, and two, the character is doing something right because it's making you feel something so passionately about, about that story. So mm. the character or the people in that story or journey, um, and it might be a real story, so it might mean news story, someone you're following, uh, you know, something that's bad that's happened in the news or whatever that might be, um, I'm just connecting you. Then, yeah. So Thank talk God. about so talk about some of the characters, Sam, that you've you've liked from some films or books or whatever. I tell I tell you what. I'll actually tell you about one character who I have um, enjoyed hating in a story. And recently, um, so you talked about how you love the stories of Harry Potter. Now I must make a confession. For the past, well, oh, I don't know. 10 we are not years, friends. I've been a famous almost famous Harry Potter file. I have absolutely hated that. No, well, I've, yeah. I, okay. Let's call it hated, um, Harry, the Harry Potter universe, but it, it was so irrational. Cause it was simply that I just didn't like that. Like almost like the Harry Potter environment. Everyone was just talking about, I was just like, uh, yeah, it's almost like, um, yeah, you rebelled against the conformity of it almost. Yeah, maybe I was just a bit like, Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, anyway I, I literally just did a, a massive um, blast through all of them, through the audiobooks. Um, Stephen Fry just read all of them, and I've listened to them when I'm on night shifts. Absolutely loved the books. The books are amazing. Amazing. The, the books are amazing. But the one character I hated, and it was done in such a beautiful way, was Umbridge. 
I hate yes. that one. Oh. With a passion. 100% agree. Passionately hated this woman. Yes. Yeah, and then when I spotted her, when I watched the films with my girlfriend's after, I was like, oh, that's that nasty piece of, piece of work, Umbridge. Spied her from a mile off. Oh, and that was because... That was because of their most amazing storytelling, not just of the character, but of the environment that this Umbridge character started building around Hogwarts. It completely turned I love Hogwarts. that Sam's talking about Hogwarts. Yeah, exactly. When she I first ter- met Sam, he was not on it. He did not, not like Harry Potter. We nearly, well, I didn't say we fall out, but I was just not impressed, let's put it that way. Because I'm a huge Harry yeah. Potter fan, and I've read the books several times. The books were the books were ama- the the books were amazing and the the books were amazing stories written stories and the films were beautifully made in terms of the visuals. No, I I prefer the books to the films. Yeah, hundred percent. Harry Potter. And that's but how you can that's... always tell a true Harry Potter fan. Hundred percent. If have you read the books? Yes, you're a fan. Have you? No, because they even people that have seen the films they say they love it. You're just like you're not even there. You're not there. You're only halfway there. Absolutely. Um, what about what about other things? Other films that you've seen, other characters that you've enjoyed before I kind of move the, to the next element yeah. of storytelling. So so Umbridge, who I hate, and there's oh, there's um, uh, are these characters in uh, films or anything? Characters? Books, films, real life. You might be like there's a character I, you hate. Or so love. I, I I tell you who I've uh, so I've been listening to the Three Musketeers, the audiobook. That's that's been actually a lot of fun, and I really like the character Atos. <laughs> who's kind of like the main dude of the three. Yeah. Now, if you've watched the three of the kids ears of the, I think it was a BBC drama, really like that. The Atos in that is sort of relatable to the Atos in the books as well. In the book, sorry. And I really like that dude. Um, apart from, he's, but, but as, as much as he's such a, a wise and strong and kind person, he's also got a really big downfall as well at the same time. Yeah. But that, that actually makes him... Human. Human. I was about to, I wasn't going to say relatable because the guys who've seen Atos and knows what he's like, he's like, damn, you relate to that to a bit. No, but, but um, human, because not everybody's perfect, right? You can't exactly. make your character not have flaws. Exactly. So he's he's practically perfect, but he's got this, which is like like a, quite a few people that you know around you, not just that you know they're in the world. Like Elon Musk is amazing, but you're wondering what his like is. Yo, his, his well, he's amazing, I, not... but everybody always says he's also a little bit weird. Exactly, but so not, again, that there's yeah, no that, perfection that... there. And this is what is funny as well is when people try to tell stories. I feel like, especially like uh, people that struggle with stories, is they try to go for perfection, and actually, it's the imperfections that make the story that much better, that much gr- more gritty, and, and like I said, relatable. Really, what's the name of there's a there's a chap oh, I can't remember his name. There's a chap who wrote a book on storytelling. I think this is 1910. He's a, he's a guy from America who, in short terms, went through and studies as much mythology as possible. Um, and then he wrote a book where, where he said, guys, out of all of the best mythological stories that we have, Greek, Norse, um, Asian, whatever, there's a pattern he saw that there was this pattern which linked them all together. And now some of the biggest films that have echoed throughout, echoed, echoed throughout the last, I don't know, 100 years, they've always conformed to this, this sort of model. And it's all about how... And you'll see them in a lot of Disney films. You'll see it in Star Wars. You'll see it in um, some of the more recent films. But it's always about how you've got... Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to ruin it by trying to like dumb it down. But it's always about how you've got this character who's... Again, relatable to whoever the target is for the film. Um, so let's say Luke Skywalker is this young dude who you know, wants to see the galaxy, travel the world, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he's kind of useful. He can mess around with like tools and he's a like, really good pilot and blah, blah, blah. But he's got this like overbearing family or like they won't leave or whatever. Um, and you basically, throughout the entire Star Wars of 4, 5, 6, you're following how Luke over... Who, he he harnesses his strengths and he learns to 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 master his weaknesses. He learns to manage them, um, and that and that's the key to the story. It's following Luke, becoming overcoming his challenges and being who he wants to be. Um, and and, it, and if you got if you, what, I'm going I'm to find a link for this. Um, if you can if you can if you can get a hold of this pattern, this model of storytelling. 
I think you could create some amazing stories. The only thing that you've got to do is add your um, as much detail as you can or want. So adding your own characters with as much detail as as much rich content and personality for these details, rich descriptions of the environments you're in um, and the complexity of the story. But in sort of waves, you want you want bits where there's like a lot of story going on and then there's sort of bits where it sort of chills out and you can enjoy yourself for a few chapters and then it all sort of kicks off again. Um, I think, okay, so I've got a question for you. Um, yeah. What was the last, and this is kind of flipping the stories we've told on its head, what was the last, if you can remember, or at least one or two stories that you cried at or have you ever cried at? I don't so usually... open it. Let's, let's give an exclusive... <laughs> I, I don't usually cry at stories at the end of stories. I usually, I usually, I, and I, I, yeah, I, I'm all fine with admitting when I cry. That's all good. I don't usually cry during films or TV shows um, or books. Um, but there has been a moment in a film specifically or a moment in a TV show when they do, when something's been done, this is the way it's been directed or the way that something, the way that it's all been together. There's been a moment where you feel a tear because like that is just like such a powerful moment. Can you name, so, can you name one? Oh, the scene or the gosh. film? Um, I can't believe I'm about to do this, but do the, I remember it's the, it was the first time, a first time I got sort of moved in this way and it was watching an anime, it was watching Naruto. Um, but there was this moment where these two characters are just about to start a fight. But there was a couple of moments when the the way the character had said something, the way that the shot was composed, the way that like the the, th- the moment that was happening, there was a moment where you're just like, oh, that is so awesome, and it actually brought a tear, almost brought a tear to my. I felt it well up, and I was like, that is so awesome. From the story, or from the uh, from the moment, from the, be- the, the like the, the the almost the beautifulness of it. I want to say that, but not. it was it was the beauty of the moment which sat in the story. It's not like I got to the end of the episode or the film. I was like, oh. Um, but, but have you done that? I don't think so. I've walked away and I'm like, wow, that was such an amazing... I'm going to give you a film to watch that if you Go do on. not do that at the end, you do not have a soul. Okay. Um, it's really random. And, and going back to our theme that it really that seems to be of the day, <laughs> VHS, um, mm. I don't even know where, it, where you can get it now. I literally have no idea because um, it's old. But it's... Well, there's actually two, but the one that I'm thinking of is called Simon Birch. Simon Birch. If you watch this film and get to the end of the film without crying, I don't, I don't even know who you is that, are. Is that Birch with an I or a U? B-I-R-C-H. It is an old, it's an old film, it's, it, but the, it's the storytelling in it and the theme of it and uh, it's just absolutely heart-wrenching. And oh, okay. that is probably the film that I cried the most at. And I'm not ashamed to say it because did I you, wouldn't be anyway, but... Did you watch Dead Poet Society? I did. I have seen Dead Poet Society. Uh, and did that sort of... Like, yeah, that got, it got me. It got me. Or, not, good, not or, fully. Goodwill, hunt, or goodwill Hunting or anything nah, like that? No, not so much. Those films did, but not enough to, to make me go full tier. Yeah. Like, oh, absolutely. with Simon Birch, I was full tier. Like, tier rolling down my cheek. Without... Well, t- uh, it, it tears are almost a strange one because I um, back when I was at university I had a um, I wanted to call him a professor I mean he was the professor there but um, he was a he was the lead animating teacher or professor mm-hmm. and and sometimes we used to go to these conventions where you had like um, loads of uh, it's you know film festivals but visual effects festivals in particular and animation. And we'd seen certain and you know they had a cinema there so all of these big studios came to show either the whole film or snippets of their film. Um, and that's how we got to see the premiere of um, Marvel Avengers Assemble. That's right, yeah. That We got to see Avengers Assemble before nice. the premiere itself. So before the movie stars got there, we got to see it. it was Amazing. Wonderful. Anyway, um, the... Yeah, so once we'd gone to see a couple of uh, these bits of film... I was sitting next to the lead professor for animation and there were certain bits during a 3D animation when it was so beautifully animated that he started like tearing up and crying. And I looked over, I was just like, are you right, dude? I mean, again, beautiful, beautiful bit of animation, beautiful film. And you look over and you see this guy crying and it's because he can see the beauty 
in what has just been done. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So he can see past the magic of the animation, but he can still see the beauty of it. How much time and love and care has gone into making this this shot, this perfect moment to be what it really is. Um, so it's really strange how it might affect some people, but it won't affect others. Is yeah, yeah, was definitely. my point. I think another another element to storytelling is um, making it, it's an escape. So some mm. people want to get lost in that in that world. Um, and that, Avatar. Again, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and again, uh, that's uh, not that's not just a film, that's not just a book, but that's day to day or whatever. People want to know that they can read something or watch something or see something, and 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 it not be about them. They, it's a way of just letting go and releasing, and it's why you know the Marvels have become so big as well because they're so almost so far fetched in terms of actually really happening that um, people can lose themselves in them. Yeah. Same with Harry Potter. It's all about the, the world you create, right? Think about Lord of the Rings. Think about um, uh, Harry Potter. Think about um, yeah, the Marvel world. You know, all these things are, 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 are allow whoever's watching the viewer to to feel safe because they're away from it and not in it, but actually mm-hmm. invested enough that they can understand that it's an escape and they can immerse themselves into a world and and that's really hard to do to get people to be immersed in in a world that you're trying to create it's especially sometimes if it's real world which is why people switch off from the news because they don't want to hear about the real bad stories yeah exactly the and they're is... real stories they're genuine things that are happening but people switch off from them because actually it's too close to home it's too it, they can't they don't they want it they can't escape it because it is happening in their world do you know what I find strange is the fact that um, – so there's loads and loads of, as you say, bad stories that you just don't want to hear about. And they're, all, and they're always in the news because they seem to sell better. But I don't see um, – I'll tell you what. The only person I saw make an effort to bring the good news to life or bring it to the surface was Russell Howard's good news. Mm-hmm. And where is that now? I, I, yeah. that's not a, that's not a that's not a dig at russell howard but i'm like but look you know like, a, a guy had to almost move heaven and earth in order to get a show going we to had to make a comedy show about you know he yeah and like he had to go to like i can't believe there's just not at least one or two news outlets or news that printers that can can just literally go all out and just report only the good news. No one's doing it and it's almost because it's and the reason is probably well i think the reason is because no one wants to because bad stories or stories about bad stuff seem to sell better than the good. Or, but again, this is linking or, it to another element. No, oh, okay. same element. You just linked it beautifully, which is people love the struggle. They love to hear ah. a struggle story. So there's a thing that I talk about in the video that, that Sam posted, which is the, the, the arc of a story, which obviously you have beginning, middle and end. Everybody knows that, quite, well, for the most part. Lots of people mm. understand. And every story has to have a beginning, middle and end, unless you're really smart and you can jumble them around. Um, uh, then in that beginning, middle and end, there needs to be an arc of a struggle. You need to be, oh, look, look, everything's going fine. Uh-oh, something's happened. And it's the, uh-oh, something's happened that makes you relate just as much and then back that character to be like, what are they going to do? Which is why in almost every single film, the first 10, 20 minutes, you always meet a character and you, see him as, yep. and you see him in his environment, his setting, and his every day. Um, how to Train Your Dragon. The first 10 minutes is always about, um, yo, how, what's his name? Not Astrid. Not Astrid um, and a, what's his yeah, name? Oh, I forgot his name as well. Pick up. Yeah, hiccup. hiccup, hiccup. You, the first 10, 20 minutes you're talking about Burke and the pests and his every day and he works at the workshop and he hangs out with his family and, and he's then, always a bit of a klutz and blah, blah. And then, like, yeah. boom, the yep. Night Fury gets caught in the... Yeah, um, and then there has to be the... the che- and that's the change of pace, the change of dynamic. That's the change in, uh-oh, what is this character going to do now? And now I'm invested. But if you haven't got that bit, that beginning, to, to invest it, which is really interesting when it comes to brands right and this is where i come really really um kind of passionate about um open doors and behind the scenes of people doing companies because actually if you're if you're posting things on social media or you're having ads or whatever that just shows all the good all the time Mm. people don't relate to that they're like your 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 company is not perfect we can we know it's not whether we know someone that's once worked there we know whatever 
by actually exposing and being honest about, hang on a minute, we're not so good at this. Hang on, we messed up here. Hang on, we did that. Brands become more relatable because of the struggle, because they've showed us what's gone on before and then they've showed us where they've gone wrong or where something's happened. And then that's where people can rally behind and get behind and believe in in, a, in an actual company and a brand. Mm. Um, I think it's someone got... who's done it really well recently is, um, is it, I'm going to say Innocent, but only because I love them. But there's a company that really, where they messed up and they basically, uh, I think it might have been Innocent, actually. Um, and it was somebody at work who was telling me about this story. Um, is that, and I am a big Innocent fan, so this is probably going to promote them even too, like, too much. It probably wasn't as, as black and white as this. But basically they the made... a smoothie company, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. They okay. basically made an error. And then they posted that they made an error and said, like, sorry, we didn't mean that. Now our bosses... Um, said we have to say sorry because if we don't we're going to get the sack and they posted that like we got it wrong we didn't mean that we did something different and now made a little like light hearted joke of it and I just think it's yeah it, you don't have to pretend you're this infallible thing business you know actually opening your doors which is why things like reality TV for the most part reality TV but also YouTubers and bloggers and stuff are doing so well because people are getting an insight into real world which means they get to see the problems as well you know when the mic messes up or the video camera is out of focus or or when they forgot to charge their battery or whatever real life things see that thing in particular seems to be like it's been trending for the past i don't know five years perhaps maybe a little bit longer i feel like there's been like a real push in the um spreading the idea of being honest about what you're actually doing. Basically, the whole idea about you know, when you look at someone's social media, you always see the best moments, never the worst. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you should you should actually just show the every the everything that's going on, and it will somehow and somehow seem to give you as a brand or a person a bit more kudos almost. Like yeah, yeah. being ge- like genuine, selling yeah. the idea, of being genuine, being authentic and genuine is better. Uh, which is weird because you see all these massive brands. Who are worth almost billions? Who are just showing every time they win, or every time they bring out a new product, or where where the hell is the being genuine behind exactly. Apple or Google? Or yeah. don't get me wrong, they they might be. Yeah, we're not, we like, we don't watch them every day, is what you mean? They exactly. might be doing they, anything. Yeah. They make amazing products, and they run amazing services, but we see very little about what's going on back end. Honestly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. And part maybe of that, you've got, you, you would understand as a company, you couldn't show 100% of the things, but then you've got, you know, you've got CEO, CEOs of companies and directors of companies who are a lot more outspoken, a lot more face on and be like, yeah, tell, you know, sh- let me t- talk to you about how well the company's doing and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and yeah, again, people buy into that. So we've got, got, got characters and we've got people, we've got, and personality, we've got the struggle. So people love a, what, 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 what's gone wrong. There's obviously yep. the setting up of a story, a beginning. So that's why you'll also find like a lot of the shots are what, like wide angle shots in video or in books, a lot of description to set that up first to set you the world. So um, you'll, you'll know what colour door it might be or you'll, you'll get a shot of the street before the do- house, before the, before the living room kind of thing because they're setting up where it is, what era it is and who, who it is. And that's yeah. the same with... Um, that's the same with... Um, books as well you know the amount of description they go into at the beginning to set the scene and set the tone um yeah. so again w- when you're creating stories i think you know you need to remember that you need to sometimes give people an insight first into where and what time it is and what world it is before you go into the character and mm. then allow some time for the character it's almost like sometimes don't rush your story you know don't try and cram yeah. it in you know uh, because those you know that um, some of the most you know, especially Pixar, Pixar shorts. If anyone sees them, I'm a massive Pixar fan as well. If you ever watch Pixar shorts, they're like 10 minutes, something, not even that. And they're just genius because they take a simple idea of like uh, the story of an umbrella. Um, mm. And that's the other thing is, and where Pixar comes in and an element to the story is it hasn't always got to be a human or a, or a, mm. or a relatable person. It could be an object, which is like toys, yeah, toy story. That is that um, is relatable. That is relatable, or that you put relatable elements into. Yeah. So characterizing an umbrella is genius 
you know, like mm. everybody, you know, who's in the rain. Can't, but what happens to the umbrella when it's not raining? What are they doing? And, you know, all the other things of an umbrella that you don't think about. OK, so when, it, you know, it's happiest when it's open and it's raining, whereas everybody else is sad because it's raining. Does it, yeah. it gives that mood. So the contrast in what you can play around with and the thought is just, yeah, it, it's great. Mm. Oh, hello. I think you've just knocked your mic out of your... I just lost your Skype input microphone. Have I muted myself? I don't think so. Hello? Is that better? Am I back? Say hey, that. Don't say oh, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're back now. That oh. was weird. I was listening to a YouTube video just to see if you had died as well. Oh. Hang on a sec. That, that scared me. It did actually... I did tug on it a little bit, like the lead. So I was like, ah. Um, so, yeah, there's yeah. stories. So... So moving on. So what do we? How do we think we can help now if people are starting to create a story? What do we think we can build a recipe or build them a things they should consider or think about? And I, and I want to break this down into books and words. Good. Video and single frame images. So I mean photos slash graphics, mm -hmm. uh, and then news articles, stories. Video. Yeah, yeah. what's the right way of approach? I think you should look at this in terms of, uh, I don't want to say the everyday person, but right now the one big thing for me at the moment is, um, oh, sorry, the, the, the ones that I think should take priority at the moment is um, creating stories in your everyday social media posts. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. How do you create a story just out of one image? And then I'd go into how do you make a quick story out of a video? So when you go on Instagram, just hold the, hold the story button. And then what would the next one be up from that? So literally starting from the everyday and then sort of make your way up to, I think films and books should be the last ones you talk about, if you know what I mean. Okay. So yeah, like um, social media stories, then uh, video stories, and then what about telling, and then what about telling stories to the people around you? Oh no, I know one that we needed was, 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 was the difference between uh, visual storytelling and audio storytelling. Yeah, okay. That's definitely because obviously we're doing a podcast as well, so that makes it even more. Um, so I think, start. okay, starting with a post. So whether this be, I think this is universal, an Instagram post. Uh, it could even be the start of a book, but I know you said leave that to later. An Instagram yeah. post, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is, right? Before you even have an image, you are asked to write text. Mm -hmm. Now, text. I'm not great at writing, but from the, uh, my understandings of how text works is ba basically in your title, if we call it a title of your post or the stuff, the start of your, um, the start of any post, it needs to be engaging and gripping. So it needs to put, or, or emotive, it needs to trigger something in that first sentence. So is it something like, um, so the first sentence could be some, you know, you see some posts like, are you tired of? Question mark. Yeah, and it's and and then and that feels like that's the hook for folk who can relate to that thing. So, are you tired of losing time in your day? And most people be like, yeah, I hate losing time in my day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it goes into this whole. Well, here is this, you know. Yeah, and then obviously that's by using a, a, a question, but you might be it might be an emotive state, statement as well. So it might be like, today wasn't a good day. Oh, what's wrong? What yeah, happened? There we go. So you get a reaction of like, oh, what happened? Or Today was possibly the worst day I've ever had, dot, dot, dot. Why was it the worst day you've ever had? Now, what about, you're what hoping about the... it's not clickbait, but also, yeah. it could also be that. What about, what about an example of a good story? So instead of today, so instead, what's an example of like, today was the best day I ever had? Okay, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You... so I think, well, I think that, that still works. Like, do you, do you want to know why today was the greatest day I've ever had? Or yeah. um, this, this, this particular thing... Um, made me happy and I didn't even know it would or what do you know I me mean? uh, yeah. and it's a it's a way of creating a feeling and a, a a sense of curiosity at the same time like what was that oh yes that's me as well or again it's about the relatability but it has to be almost in that first sentence and I'm not don't get me wrong I'm, I'm saying this out loud I'm really not good at doing it um but someone who I know who's been quite good in the past is my cousin he did creative writing and he said he had to do this exercise that I've always remembered when he told me, which is try to tell a story in six to eight words. 
the whole okay. story. So that's what you've got, six to eight words to tell the story. To, oh, so wow. that you can almost create something within that first sentence, which is actually really difficult to do, obviously. I've done the exercise where you can, uh, well, actually where it's, um, where it's used with, um, what's it called, storyboards. So you're given 32 storyboards, you have to build a story like that. Then you have to t take 16 and tell relatively the same story. Then eight, then four, then two storyboards and all this sort of stuff. So like first telling a story, then breaking it down to its simplest form as you can. So sometimes you've got to take storyboards out because you just don't need that bit of information for... And I think the art, of, the art of that as well is also teaching you to strip back your words. So often we want to write too much rather than... Uh, it's almost like the way I do things is I write things out a lot and then I strip it back, strip it back, strip it back and get that as succinct as I can. Um, because obviously sometimes you, if you're, if you go on too long and it's not a book, it's a social media post, you're going to lose people because it's going to be like, I'm halfway down and I haven't got to the point yet of what's gone yeah. on. So I the, get that with story, with my storytelling itself. Um, so sometimes I say to myself, right. Okay. Okay. So this is this particular bit I'm about to tell, like, um, I, been trying to figure out how to tell better stories to groups of people sometimes i'll get like i always say right the thing you, you need when you're telling someone about something is the context so that that last time i went out with my mate bradley this happened i feel like i've got to give a bit of context so bradley who's my mate um we went out recently because it's in stag do uh, i feel like i give too much context and less getting on with the story mm -hmm. and sometimes it sort of feels like if i give too much context it's sort of like the, the flow of the story just seems to plummet to the point where you just like, oh, I just can't bother to like finish it. Let alone, my friends can't be bothered to listen. <laughs> to me. Do, do you know what I mean? I think, yeah, and I think, do you know what one of the great things I think about Twitter is? Yeah. Is that it doesn't allow you to do that. Yeah, you 200. have to stay within 240 characters or 280 characters or whatever yeah. it is. And so I feel like that's genius because it makes people think about what they're going to post. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, just so anybody knows, if you want to know what I mean by six six word stories, if you go to sixwordstories.net, there's some great ones here. I'm just going to read a couple out because I think they're genius. Oh, yeah? um, uh, right, we've got total media blackout, agreed the pe president. That's the first line. Now, don't you want to know why the president agreed for a total media blackout? Yes, you do. Um, you've got strangers, friends, best friends, lovers, strangers. Okay. What, 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 what is going yeah, yeah. on? Uh uh, wrong number says a familiar voice. Ooh, do you know what I mean? These are work, work really good and they're really succinct, but they paint a picture straight away. You're wondering, you've got curiosity. It's giving you a bit of a character, maybe a bit of a relationship. It's already set set the scenario. You know, wrong number. Everybody's already pictured someone on the phone. Everyone's already related to when they got a wrong number call, and then it says a familiar voice. Now there's a curiosity. Go well, who was it then? What? Who? How familiar? Like, can Does they it, Doesn't it feel like the hook where it's almost like um, the very first bit is it, it relates to everyone's been through it, and then the hook is when it doesn't go according to plan. So it's it, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's it, like the struggle, like, like the the issue. Yeah. Like um, wrong number. No one's really interested. Says a familiar voice. Wait a minute. What? Like. No one that I know is it's, it, like who I've heard says, "Oh yeah, sorry, wrong." Number. I'm like, "Wait a minute, no one said that to me." And you instantly just like, "Oh, something's good here." Like, yeah, 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 definitely. So I think text it, again, being more succinct in social media posts. Um, obviously, you do have long form, so you can do long form in LinkedIn and Facebook and stuff. But again, even getting that succinct to tell the beginning, middle, end, and paint a picture and tell a story. And and, it, and what you were going, uh, you started talking about is like you try, you give too much context. Again, I think there's an again, I'm really pants. I almost know the theory, but can't apply it myself. So I'm definitely holding my hands up here. But it's almost like flitting between the two. So it's giving some context, carrying on with the story, and adding more context. Mm. In, in small bite sizes. Maybe that's the key, uh, is finding out what the right balance is for each situation, be it where the story is, like where you're telling it and who you're telling it to, and then also how much time you've got. So if you've only got 240 characters in Twitter, then you need like a sentence on beginning, I don't know, maybe four sentences in the middle, and then the last sentence at the end, which is like the, like the punchline or something, I, I don't know. Or, and that's to tell the whole story, but obviously if you want to create suspense so they click through to read more or do something else, there's another art to that whole mm. cliffhanger ending, right? Mm. 
Mm. Um, there's another one here. I'm just going to read it out just because I thought it's quite good as well. Um, born a twin, graduated only child. Six words, but that's a story, isn't it? You just want to know what, what happened between that. Like, you just want to know. Mm. Like, um, so, yeah, check out Six Word Stories anyway. It was just something my cousin told me. Uh, and it's a way of helping people write text or, and, or create curios- curiosity in stories quickly. Um, can I, so moving on to... I was, yeah, uh, was going to say, can we take a quick moment, and probably this might be after your point, quick, a quick moment to appreciate um, how stories are absolutely everywhere in the society and it's almost... Yeah, not recognized or it's 100%. or it's but only uh, I, I think for myself personally only recently has it been sort of um, really sort of clicked that the art of storytelling is in almost everything that we do and every day the things that we see like I, I've only recently started hearing the phrase um, or word narrative used in sort of the I, I've heard this a lot recently. Like I've seen a lot of um, quotes, like uh, it, uh, it doesn't follow the narrative, or follow the narrative, or um, so what's the narrative of this, or something mm-hmm. like that. Like, but yeah, no, but the I, fact I that agree. it's every everywhere in in multiple scales of and that. Go on. That's the thing. That's exactly it. Multiple scales. I was just about to say, and that's the brilliant thing about it is that it is everywhere. But you've got stories that we think of as stories up here. But it's actually they are everywhere because that's then taking stories and making them amazing stories, mm. taking everyday things. You know, the, the, you know, again, going back to Pixar and Toy Story, they managed to take the story of a toy or the and, and actually make that into an actual epic story, an everyday thing. Um, the story was already there. Like, technically, people have toys all the time, you know, children, whatever, adults, collectibles, non-collectibles. It was all there. What they did is found a way to put it all together. And we all have stories as well. If you ask, and that's why I love questions and having conversations with people, because when you ask them, podcasts are great for this, you can ask people questions. And if they're good at storytelling, they'll be able to bring you along on that journey when you ask them a question. Mm, cool. Um, and so... They're everywhere, but you can also... There's a difference between it being done well and it just being everywhere. Mm, totally. Cool. Uh, and that's what makes people stand out as well. What was the... Sorry, I, I, um, I sort of got in before... No, I was going to move on to the next bit, which was visual. So we've done kind of words, and this might be more up your street, really, but if you say a photo or a graphic, a still frame image, so not in anything that is moving, so not video yet, what... What would you say is a good element to telling a story through a picture? Um, okay, so the word I would use for that is composition. Is key composition. So, um, oh god, it's it like you you could turn this into like a a, a two hour lecture. Exactly, that's um, why it's just high, high level, high level. I think this whole I, this whole theme we'll have to come back to at some. Point. I think the key is composition. So in a, in a, in a uh, so in a either a book cover or uh, even in just a photo, um, I think one of the key things is how you compose all of the elements of a picture. So what is where, why it's there, what, what is where, why those things are there, and then what those things, what emotion do, th- do those things give because of where they are and how they are. So... Um, there's there's entire paintings of there's a really famous painting of two boxers. Hang on a second. Uh, wait. And, uh, uh, while you're just searching that, I, I also love the way, obviously, and I believe in the statement as well. Picture says a thousand words. Mm. Like the way if you get it right, you can say so much. If you ask people, tell me what you see here. Tell me what you mm. what you get from it. Obviously, there'll be different takes on what people get from it, but also there'll be the fact that people get so much from the fact that you just ask them, what's this picture telling you? Yeah, like, so this one is called The Art of Boxing, George Bellows, The Mantle. So, like, if you just Google image that, you'll see, like, really, really strong directions of motion. It's one striker who's literally just, like, charging into this other um, boxer. This boxer's kind of, like getting into it but he's like sort of blocking and you think he's about to like swing the right hook that whole idea of motion in the composition so 
in mm-hmm. composition, there's a whole load of, let's call them subcategories of things that build up the composition. So one of them was, uh, so in that one in particular is motion. It's such a strong motion. You've got two almost like curving lines, arrows of motion. This guy's like charging in and then this guy's sort of like blocking but hooking over the top of it. So if you looked at it and tried to draw arrows of it, you'd see two really strong curves and that's it. But that in itself is such an interesting part of the composition, therefore part of the story of that, you know? Uh, Whereas if you just look at a photo, like a family portrait photo, it's all just like one, two, three, four people in the photo smiling with maybe they're they're clutching. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Maybe they're like each of them are holding like their favorite thing. So one might have a violin, one might have a teddy bear, one might have a, I don't know, something like that. Um, but yeah. Something in theatre that you're told, which I suppose does translate to picture as well, but is um, like proxemics. So how far or close something is to something else builds that relationship. So, for example, if you had a family portrait and the dad was on one side and the mum was on the other and the kids were in the middle, that tells you a different picture than if a mum and dad are in the middle and the kids are around them. And that, just taking that example. So where you place things and how you place things and the distance between them. Uh, can can give you things like status, um, can give you things like, uh, yeah, understanding and story and relationship without actually ever explaining anything. Yeah, uh, honestly, um, I, I could talk for ages about like individual parts. Um, I'd have to go away for about 20 minutes and quit. And for the sake of a video like this, I want to quickly plan out how to compartmentalize, how to go through composition. So you've got in composition, you've got this, 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 and each branch off into their own separate bits. But... We don't have time for that. So what I strongly suggest is those of you who are interested in that bit, just Google composition, composition. but I'd actually say Google the art of composition, and I'm guaranteed you're going to find a number of... um... And we'll try and get um, Sam, if he's up for the challenge, to do a a, a six tips post uh, that we're starting off anyway on composition, see how he... Uh, how he how he likes that he might how be able to that might do be something it. like that. that yeah I think actually I think that will probably the best way to do that is actually probably do it through images and then just like one bit of text yeah cool exactly you so yeah. you've been set the challenge um, and then okay so moving on to video so we there's a picture that's a single frame and then how does video up the levels even more mm. well I think we, 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 which we're getting to anyway but one thing is video allows a lot of is the the place of audio yep so obviously you haven't got audio unless you've got an audio book i know that there's a whole separate thing but if you're reading a book you haven't got the audio you haven't got the different voices you've got your imagination which i think is amazingly powerful so that's one thing that books have that the others don't pictures kind of starts to take away the uh, uh, imagination a bit um, because you can now see what maybe characters look like or the setting or the feel of of that particular thing but video you then have the element of both hearing and sounds of the environment, so rainforests, or cars, that kind of stuff, plus what to- people sound like, which makes them relatable or not relatable. You, how many times have you heard someone, and in, people might be listening to me or you right now, and be like, that, 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 that voice just goes through me, is annoying. That happens. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can be put off, or, or obviously some of that voice is put on. Um, but then layered with the fact that you have a image that can tell you a thousand words essentially at the frames of like 20 frames per second you have loads of scope to keep evolving or tell a deeper story i think Mm. some elements absolutely yeah in some ways um and obviously the feel obviously the night the day you can play around with you haven't got a right it was night time you just show that in a frame that it's it's dark absolutely you know what i mean And, and we 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 assume we make the assumption that it is nighttime or that they are in a place with no windows if it's dark. So I think it allows you to, with through sight, be able to pick up up, up on those kind of things quicker, um, which means you can st- t- essentially tell longer stories in a shorter amount of time, which I'm assuming is why you can convert a 600-page book to an hour and a half. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then it moves us to voice. So then what would you say is the art of storytelling if you have no pictures and you have no words, but you only have things like a podcast, which is really nice because it kind of brings the whole podcast back round to a 360. Oh, sorry, I was just doing my thing. Uh, so, sorry, the question is what... What do you think makes a, a podcast or audio 
a good way of storytelling or what do you, or elements do you think you need for that to, to make a good story to make the story good through audio I oh it's a tough one the first thing that comes to mind when you ask me that is timing timing um, so now I would talk about there's a podcast I listen to called myths and legends I love the um, that these guys uh, literally they take as many mythological stories as possible um, and they try and turn them into little 30 minute um, episodes. Um, I can't remember what the, 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 it, the, this dude always has like a thing at the start. He says something like um, some of these stories you already know about that have surprising origins. And some of them are stories that you don't know, but you should definitely listen to. Now this guy, um, why do I really like his audio storytelling? Um, first of all, he takes really old um, classical mythological stories, but then he put, puts them in a, and he illustrates his characters in a s- language or sound. So if he takes Zeus, for example, um, he kind of illustrates Zeus as Zeus was, or as we know it to be, but he kind of puts a more modern feel to him. So sometimes Zeus will be talking and th- and then sometimes Zeus will say like and totally and uh, I'm not sure about this. But classic, you know, in classical um, Greek mythological plays, all these characters are always using ye yeah. olde English or oh, how yeah. I announced thee. Like, but this guy yeah. is just like, yeah, totally. I think you, me and Hades should like hang out sometime and what do you – yeah, yeah, what are you doing with that horn of corn, cornucopia, man? That's so weird. Like, uh, a terrible American accent. <laughs> but um, with timing in particular, um, it can add um, – th- if, you, if you have a guy telling – you know, someone telling a story of, you know, once upon a time there was this person who lived in the – like, and it was you inst- almost instantly lose – your audience, because it is just a single line of. I think ish. that I think dynamics in in voice. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't mean you need to do accents necessarily, but I think it's being able to change your intonation. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try something. We we uh, this is random, random, but I found a short story, so I'm gonna read it. Yeah. And I'm gonna read it, and I'm gonna want your feedback on how I read it. Okay. I'm really going to concentrate. I'm not even going to look at you. And obviously, if you're listening to this podcast, any feedback on what you think of this yep. this storytelling? Now, this, it's only a short story. Um, I've got but, my eyes I'm closed. Not I'm not. I'm not falling asleep. But I'm just. I'm just. I, I want to just listen to it and not see anything. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So, <clears throat> in a small Italian town, hundreds of years ago, a small business owner owed a large sum of money to a loan shark. The loan shark was a very old, unattractive looking guy that had just happened to fancy the business owner's daughter. He decided to offer the businessman a deal that would completely wipe out the debt he owed him. However, the catch was that he would only wipe out the debt if he could marry the businessman's daughter. Needless to say, this proposal was met with a look of disgust. The loan shark said that he would place two pebbles into a bag, one white and one black. The daughter would then have to reach into the bag and pick out a pebble. If it was black, the debt would be wiped, but the loan shark would then marry her. If it was white, the debt would also be wiped, but the daughter wouldn't have to marry the loan shark. Standing on a pebble uh, path uh, in in, in the businessman's garden, the loan shark bent over and picked up two pebbles. Whilst he was picking them up, the daughter noticed that he'd picked up two black pebbles and placed them both into a bag. He then asked the daughter to reach into the bag and pick one. The daughter naturally had three choices as to what she could have done. Refuse to pick a pebble from the bag, take both pebbles out of the bag and expose the lone shark for cheating, pick a pebble from the bag fully well knowing it was black and sacrifice herself for her daughter's freedom. She drew out the pebble from the bag and before looking at it, accidentally dropped it into the midst of the other pebbles. She said to the loan shark, oh, how clumsy of me. Never mind. If you look into the bag for the uh, one that is left, you'll be able to tell which pebble I picked. The pebble left in the bag was obviously black. And seeing as the loan shark didn't want to be exposed, he had to play along as if the pebble um, the the pebble the daughter dropped was white and clear 
her father's debt. The moral of the story, it's always possible to overcome a tough situation throughout uh, the box thinking and not giving, give in to the only option you think you have to pick from. Brilliant. Um, I love the sort of moral of the story. So the part of the end where it wraps it all up. Um, I didn't write this story, by the way. Yeah. I found but, it. Just so you know, that is not me because I cannot write like that. But I thought reading it might give a pod, podcast people listening uh, some kind of yeah talking talking point of what you think made it good, made it bad. I what I did that was good or not. Um, are we critiquing your reading or of the story itself or both? Yeah, all right, not so much my reading because I know I've stumbled over okay. the words for my reading. But yeah, yeah, definitely my reading. So what made the reading good or bad or what could have made it better? Definitely critique. Um, be, be, be so good. I liked the timing of the beginning because you sort of like set the stage in very clear sentences and gives gives the, the, the listener plenty of time to process it and almost like build it in your mind. So if I got my eyes closed, you say it's a small town in Italy. Okay. I'm picturing a small town. In Italy. It's, it's was it 700 years ago. Okay. So, you know, not exactly a Tesla driving around and, you know, and, you know, uh, no concrete. It's all like ye olde bricks and, or, you know, stonework, whatever. Um, I think what could you have done a bit? Yeah, what would have made it better? What's, what what, what think, elements do we need to add to, to bring that really... A bit more emotion in in key parts of the story um, mm-hmm. and not and, and also just a hint more timing. So that part where um, the girl realises that there's two black pebbles being put into a bag, you could have been... like So, for example, you could have been like really slow and really dark with that when the woman like um, noticed that. And then that moment of suspense when she's got to put her hand in the bag and what am I going to do? She's got three things. But then you could have done this really clever thing where that moment when an idea pops into her mind about let's drop the drop the pebble into the pile of stuff. Um, and then you could and then the, the, and then the idea of this guy has to has to say why because he doesn't want to get exposed. You could. Because I was getting this moment, oh, you clever girl. But I think you could have um, illustrated that just a little bit more in the reading. So book. again, dynamics in dynamics, terms of pacing. Right? Dynamics so. in intonation and pacing. Certainly. Nice. Yeah. So, and obviously I didn't know that story. But the, the other right reason I wanted to bring that out is that imagine if you know your story. Yeah. How not to get carried away and how to break. Yeah, it absolutely. Like because so, sometimes you can, like you said, run off with your own story. So right? when you know when someone's reading an audio, but you can always tell a podcast from an audio book, right? Um, because the audio book, there'll have been multiple takes for the same sentence over and over and over until it's perfect. With a podcast, as you and I are doing, we sort of—I I don't want to say—we're uh, not inamely driveling on, um, but. Try, well, we try. Yeah, we try not to, but we we are doing. Yeah, you know, we. Yeah, this is sharing us sharing our stories or our thoughts in the moment, um, naturally. So we're going ums, likes, and this, that, and the other. In audio books, not a single um or like, in an audio book whatsoever, unless it's what the but, characters say. But why? But yeah, exactly. Why? Like everything is perfect in an audio. Every, you know, in a good audio book, everything, um, every word, and every second has its. It's its own time and place. Um, so if you listen to Stephen Fry read anything, you always think, oh, perfection. Um, but, uh, and that... yeah, but he gets loads of chances to, to work on his dynamic. Exactly. And obviously he's now naturally uh, 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 talented at it anyway. Yeah. So. And even as... Um, okay, so Jordan Peterson, who's uh, written a, a number of books, and I've, I'm listening to his pod, uh, audio book on 12 Rules for Life. Um, in talking about how he wrote the books, he spoke about how he took every single line of that book and rewrote every sentence about 50 times on average. And he was talking, and everyone was like, oh my God, that must take you like 15 years. And he said, yep, but that's what it took to write this book. You know, so it, brilliant. Um, but then also, I think you get a sense of that when he's reading the book, audio book, because he's also, he's the narrator of the audio book as well as the writer. And as you listen to him, um, he's, I think he's got a rather good technique on how he presents his information, uh, sorry, his points of each chapter and how he presents that information to support the idea as well. Um, so, yeah, like 
really, really, imp- I think it's really important to have intonation, how you vary the tone of your voice and your timing as well. Because, you know, like, so for example, you notice at the end of an advert on a radio, there'll always be like a very quick 20 second story. But then some, uh, uh, some of these adverts at the very end, you'll have this dude like terms and conditions applied. See, the little, 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 and you're like, what the, well, in today's society, you know that, okay, terms and conditions apply, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Like just go on the website and check out that bit. Um, but if you had an, an advert of just that, you'd be like, what the hell did I just listen to? You've got no idea what, what they're selling you what the benefits are, who they are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, no, I think, yeah, I think that that's good. What, so to wrap it up, what do you think are things people do, can do to just go away and improve on some v- storytelling things? Practice. Um, yeah. pra- well, pra- that's, pra- practice. Yeah, practice. Okay, so first thing I'd say is um, do a bit of research into who some of the best storytellers are and have been, um, and then just read or, or read, listen, watch um, as much of that as possible while you are studying to become a better storyteller, um, and then just practice in whatever medium you're deciding to do. As an artist, I'm constantly practicing storytelling. As an illustrator or as a um, or as a graphics designer, I'm you know, almost subconsciously try and look in at um, telling a story with just images or the style of um, specific parts. So if I'm building vectors even, um, well, I put it this way, as an, as an illustrator, as a concept artist, I, I say to myself, every brushstroke will tell a character's story. Um, so, and I've been practicing, you know, if you use jagged lines in a brushstroke on a character, and if, yeah, if your character t- is just full of jagged lines, you, almost instantly you've got this emotion of, oh, this might be a bad guy or something. Um, but if you use loads of round and soft um, and almost uh, bubbly sort of brushstrokes, you've got like, oh, this is nice, cute character that's like really, he's you know, got a bubbly personality or whatever, you know? I think you've said, I think you've said what, watch other pe- what other people do, and, but then you have to find the way to apply it yourself. You can't be a copycat. So if you know a, a, a business or a company or someone who does good social media posts, then have a look at how they're structuring them. If you know someone who's written a good book, then obviously what, look at how they're structuring it. If you're watching video or YouTube or whatever, have a look at frame by frame what, what they're doing and how they're putting together that story. Um, and again, listen out for what podcasters might do um, to help you. So I think it's about going out there and listening and finding out what you like then breaking it down and then finding your own way to apply it. So almost build the model that somebody else has done that you've liked and apply your own stuff. And then once you're comfortable with that, then you can continue to, to make it bespoke. Should uh, a question I posed to you is should people look at specializing storytelling in certain areas or should they without? Okay. So, so really it's decide, choose your medium. first. Choose, yeah. choose the kind of stories you want to tell first then research what everyone else is doing and telling that story. Again, that's just my opinion. Yeah. But obviously, you know, certain directors are great at action. Certain d- directors are great at romance. Certain people, you know, are great at certain books. There's a reason for that because they've honed in on one thing. If you try and, again, it's the hard, if you try and be everything to everyone, you'll be nothing to no one. Yeah, like how many directors do you know that are, are amazing salesmen? How many salesmen do you know that would be amazing directors? You know, like, okay, you might know, like, yeah, there might be like a strange anomaly where you don't actually know a few, but do you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's. Yeah, and if you think about it as well, story is the ultimate sales anyway, because if you can get a story right, people will buy into it. If they're buying into it, they'll, they'll think about Marvel, how many millions of pounds, because they sold the story of a, of a world and a thingy that now everything can sell around that. Whereas it's trying to sell a hero from scratch isn't going to quite work the same absolutely yeah okay right i think we should wrap this up so have you got anything you want to leave with anybody for scrap book episode two? um how about we do okay so we told people what we told them we've told a bit let's tell them what we told them so we started with just an intro of what you and i've been up to we then went through uh we then went through um quick examples of inspiring stories that we found now how can you quickly break down you had the whole the bit about how to create um, good stories. How can you quickly put that into keywords? So you want to have one about characters. You have one about places or personalities. Then you had. So what are the keywords? Yeah, I think I think the key the key things are um, struggle, struggle, 
ca- character, character. Um, relatable, yep. um, and um, I can't remember the other one. Um, oh, beginning, middle, and end. It has to have the structure of mm. the, the the same the same art of you need to establish the beginning, the middle is where the struggle happens, and the end needs to be some kind of resonance. Yeah. So uh, yeah, again, like um, it feels like we will have to add that into the description of the podcast yeah, itself. Podcast. So will, yeah. yeah. Um, and then what else? I think. Oh, and we will. Um, and then, so the next question is: How do how should people look at applying story to their everyday lives going forward? Whether or not you're a blogger, whether or not you're a salesman, whether or not you're an accountant, what well, like uh, so, and also people just like putting stuff on their social media, just wanted to get a, you know just. Uh, yeah, I think one of the things is is that stories that sell and people buy into are not perfect. You need to have the the edge of something you need to have something that keeps people curious so don't try and make your story the best well-rounded perfect story because it's actually the the imperfections that people buy into i think um i think that you practice telling stories in different ways so telling stories with a picture with video especially if you're social media with text don't just always do one type of storytelling so for example although we we're key on graphics and video we don't just post that Sometimes I just post a tweet and sometimes I just post text on it. You need to change it up a little bit at, to keep it varied to see what you're stronger at. Mm. So I know I'm not strong at, at, at articles or writing, so I don't do it as much. But I try to to just change it now and then to see if I can add some other element. Mm. OK. And then finally, we looked at the like sort of innovation part of the show, which was um, uh, almost how to become better at storytelling and that was like find out who's the best storytellers study them and then just have practice 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 yeah 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 and again leave us some comments about your favorite stories mm. who you like if we got anything referenced anything wrong drop us a comment and let us know that you you listen to it or let us know what parts you liked um and obviously we can try to bring it back in and answer them and all that kind of stuff in next crap again. yeah what's your favorite stories and then what who's your favorite st- favorite storytellers definitely want to hear about that because i'm going on like audiobook binging at the moment um and i want to get as much literature and some you know as much non-fiction and fiction dummy as possible I used to hate reading as a kid, and now I'm actually really interested in it, especially when I'm doing night shifts. Um, I think the right. only other thing is, are there any um, special announcements you want to make for Simply Create at all, or what, we, what we're going to be doing this week? And or, do you and I want to make a challenge for each other until the next episode, and then we can pick it up then? Ooh. Yeah, we can do it, if we can think of you, you gave me a chance about making a six-step post on, it was composition, I think. Well, give me, give me a six-step post back. Um, I, I, oh, I want, yeah. I want to say storytelling for social media, but that seems like a bit of, not a basic challenge, but, um, I was about to say something that will challenge you in particular, but you've challenged me with making composition. I, I know like a, a wee bit about it or I can research and illustrate it quasi. Um, how about teaching people how to tell stories in a pub? Pub stories. What do you call that? How how to okay. tell a pub story? I challenge you to make a, a post, six post. Yeah, a six post on how to tell pub stories or something. Like that. Amazing. Which means I like these challenges because it means afterwards as well that you know if you've listened to this and watched it and all stuff, you get some resources as well that overly help you. Um, and obviously, by all means, ask us anything you want to know. Right. Until next time. That's the scrapbook. That's the simply create. Boom. Simply create scrapbook we Audi. Uh, until next time, which will be next month, um, there's obviously Essex to East London. There's more videos going up. Watch for content, blah, 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 blah. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and we'll catch you real soon. Right. Those people on Instagram, thanks for joining. We'll see you later. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Cheers, guys. Later on. Right. So, hi. Stock stream. Stop. End stream.